A trail of streamers and confettis follows the floating village of Syrian as it drifts between the stars. The people put away their instruments, they take off their masks, they roll up their decorations. The celebration is over. The queen of honey has returned to her realm. The people look at one another and look at their village floating amidst the stars and wonder, uh, now what? Hello, and welcome back to Sphere Hoppers. I am your host and storyteller, Royce Rosewood. We are continuing the adventures of the crew of the Prosperous Performance as they head for the Sphere of Ashwati in search of Pointage, who has one of the orbs of Rayoria, or at least was last seen with one. Okay, so here's the situation. Our next stop is this sphere, and then we have one more encounter in between the spheres before we get to Ashwati, which is where Drudagog believes that pointage has gone to. Let's roll up to see what happens. Let's roll in our die of fate. Nine. Nothing so far. I think I'm going to change the way this die of fate works. I have some ideas, but we're going to keep it the same for now. Um, but it's not really doing what I want it to do. Landing on a new sphere, let's see what we find here. What is the landscape type? A rocky shore, the notable fauna, R45, undead, the local population is 24, hidden. And what is our landing site like? 35, a hamlet, and what is the name of this place? Cotter. So the ship descends onto a mostly oceanic world. There are strips and archipelagos of rocky islands. And there is a landing site. They see a small hamlet, so small religious buildings stacked along this little strip of land. And as they come in, they don't see anyone. The, they don't know this, but the population is hiding, so they don't immediately see anyone. And I think the reason that they are hiding is because of this undead fauna. You know what, I'm going to draw a creature card from my Lore Masters Act just to get an idea for a, an animal. So looking at these examples, I think the best choice for our undead animal is going to be a frog. Okay, so this place is obviously infested with undead frogs. We need to know how far away they are, and what their awareness is. So we're going to look at the distance and awareness tables. They are nearby, and they are unaware but on guard. So the ship is able to come in and land. The undead frogs have not noticed them yet. Why stay at all? <laughs> Why not just get out of here? Well, there's a problem. Um, they are low on fuel. They need darkness to move the ship. Uh, they only have half a unit left. So, you know, if they want to not be totally stranded when they get to Ashwati, because uh, not knowing what things are like there, um, they need to collect darkness. Now, I've thought a little bit about this, and there was a suggestion in the comments about how to handle this. So either the ship needs to be in darkness, like they need to spend a night somewhere absorbing darkness from somewhere, or they need to, you know, take the darkness out of a population, right? The uh, population is experiencing some sort of problem, some sort of unwellness, darkness within them, and if they can solve that and take the darkness from them, um, then that will work. So I, I think uh, both, I think we can use both, but in this situation, a community that is um, being plagued by undyed frogs uh, seems like a situation that if they resolve, that could count for a unit of darkness and they can keep. So first up, we're gonna have Cam. 
use third eye to see if they can detect the hidden peoples. All right, six, yeah. So Cam says, I know you don't see anyone, but with my third eye, I was able to notice that the local people here, the local monks and nuns, are hiding underground. There are tunnels that lead from the little buildings down underground, and they're all hiding there. I'm imagining they're at this landing platform, sort of down the rocky beach, you know, they can see these undead frogs who are not aware of them yet. And then sort of further up, you know, maybe up in some elevation too, is where the buildings of the hamlet are. So maybe one or more of them could try to sneak up there to not alert the frogs uh, and like check in with the monks and nuns, presumably. Cam has flight and so does Kristen, is, is just a bird, can fly. So I think they're going to try to fly up there. Cam casts spell, two stamina, and we roll to see how that goes. Four, great. And Kristen is a bird, for Kristen can just fly. Cam and Kristen, the tiny bird chef, uh, fly up and over, uh, kind of back around in, in the opposite direction of where the frogs are, and they come down to this empty building. It's very modest, you know, it's been carved out of the rock. There is like a bed. Cam knows because of their detect hidden that um, there's, there's like a hidden entrance under the bed. So they move the bed aside. Cam says, um, hello, we are, we are here to help. Um, if, if, if you let us in uh, and give us some information, we might be able to help you with this frog problem. There's some shuffling, and the door opens, and they see a little person. I haven't done this in every place, but I'm curious to know what type of people these are. So I'm going to roll on the bean type and see. Nine, they are arthropods. Six, they are stinging arthropods. So they'd be like scorpion people. So out pops this anthropomorphic scorpion in very rustic robe. This is one of the hermits of Catter, and they say, oh, come in, come in quickly. And they go down and um, how many scorpion hermits are in this room? There are five. Okay. So they go down into an underground chamber and there are, you know, candles or lanterns and, you know, they have a few preserved foodstuffs and like a crate or something. It's very, you know, it's already rustic and then this is like the minimal survival. Okay, hopefully we solved that sound problem. <laughs> Yikes! So Cam says, uh, we're, we're, we're here to help. We have a small crew. We have a ship. We might be able to help, but can you tell us more about what's going on here? And Tovia says, yes, I can. Welcome to our hamlet. I'm sorry we couldn't have uh, greeted you at a more hospitable time. Undead frogs. Big problem. And Kristen says, can you tell us anything about the frogs? Have you noticed anything about their behavior? Uh, we've got a need and a weakness table here. Which one are we going to roll on? Two, we're going to roll on a weakness table and get... 31. They are naive. We have noticed that they are very easy to trick. We were setting up a trap to lure them away, but unfortunately there were just too many of them and we decided to retreat. But know that they are not very intelligent and they might be tricked quite easily. Cam says, all right, we'll go meet up with the rest of our crew and see what we can do. All right, so Cam and Kristen fly back to the ship. They sort of they explain the situation, and they come up with a plan. Um, Cam has this new spell that he got from the crypt in the Stygian Library, a uh, spell called Ultra Transform, that allows them to transform into something they are familiar with of comparable size. So if Cam spends some time observing the undead frogs, 
they might be able to transform into one and maybe get them to move along or, you know, we, we do know that they're easily deceived. So, so Cam is going to spend some time observing the frogs. And since this is taking time, I'm going to roll on the encounter table just to see if anything happens. What happens to something approaches? Well, that would be the undead frogs. So Cam is trying to observe stealthily, but notices that the undead frogs are getting closer and closer. In order for me to keep playing out this scene, I need to know what these creatures are up to. So even though the characters aren't going to know the answer to this question, I need to know what these creatures need is. So I'm going to roll on the need table. 24 brains that tracks for undead. <laughs> They're hungry. They want to eat brains. Okay. All right. So they are sniffing out. They are coming closer to Cam. I'm going to have Cam cast Ultra Transform and we'll decide whether they've had enough time uh, based on whether this succeeds or fails. But it does cost seven stamina. Putting them down to seven and then we'll roll to see if it's a success. They need to roll under six. Nope. <laughs> Cam tries to cast this spell. You know, they've transferred the thing from this crypt scroll down onto their little uh, magic slate spell book. And they're trying to say the things, but they just don't have enough familiarity with this thing. Everyone else, I assume, is sort of back up closer to the ship. So I think this is going to be combat. How many of these things are there? I guess I'm going to roll like a 2d6. Ooh nine. All right, since we're using Troika as our resolution system, I just pulled out the table that I used during the Troika campaign to generate random monsters. Fortunately, I rolled pretty well. These uh, zombie frogs only have a skill of three. They each have nine stamina and they deal damage as spear. So what I'm imagining is that their tongue shoots out and is kind of pointed at the end and that's how they attack. I also decided that since we know that they're naive and they're also undead, um, that they each only have an initiative of one. I'm shuffling the stack. All right, who's up first? An enemy. All right, so the closest shoots out their sticky tongue. Cam has a total of plus two on this. All right, ah, oh, great. <clears throat> Cam doesn't currently have any weapons ready. It'll just be an unarmed attack. The Undead Frog shoots out its necrotic tongue and Cam is able to grab onto it and kind of yank a little bit and kind of hurt it that way. Just one point of damage. All right, who's next? Cam. Cam has another new spell that we haven't tried and haven't used and haven't even decided what it does. Uh, it's called Rain of Hail. Uh, I assume it does damage in an area. So we'll go ahead and cast that. It costs three stamina, putting Cam down to four. And we'll say it does 2d6 damage in an area. So there's maybe like three up close. Oh, first we got to roll to see if it's successful. It's not. Cam is, you know, looking at their spell book and they've never cast this spell before. And, you know, they try to do it and they feel the mag magical energy, the magical stamina rush out of them, um, but they're not able to cast this spell. All right, Dragog. Everybody else is still way up. So Dragog is going to kind of run down the cliffs and onto the beach and then, and then get uh, into position. And that's all he's able to do this time. So now Dragog is there ready to fight an enemy. All right, a frog sees Dragog coming and attacks. Dragog has a total advantage of plus three. And so we'll tie. Spend a point of luck. Ah, great. Dragog breaks the tie. As Dragog runs down the slope, one of the undead frogs looks and pounces at Dragog, but Dragog is able to swing with his astrolabe. Six points of damage. Suvara. Suvara is going to go into the ship and get on Janshi, mount him and get ready to joust. All right, Zamzis. Zamzis is still up by the ship, but is going to use their eye beam to shoot at one of the frogs that is not quite uh, engaged with Cam and Dragog. Zamzis has got plus five. 
Ooh, that is a fumble. I beam goes wide and you know cuts into the cliff. <laughs> Not able to hit any of those frogs. All right. It's the end of the round. Zamzies is up again. <laughs> Gonna try again. There we go. And how much damage? Nine damage. That's gonna totally vaporize one of them. Does another I beam and is able to take care of one of the nine undead frogs. Kristen is up. He is not a fighter. He does not have any fighting skills. I didn't give him any fighting skills, but he did learn tactics. He's going to try to recall what he learned from that tactics lesson and see. Uh, and if he succeeds, maybe that'll help give the other players an advantage. Six. Mm, not quite. So he's shouting, all right, uh, remember, uh, we've got to create flanks. Oh, uh, we've got to uh, engage the enemy. Oh, uh, you know, oh. He's kind of confused and he's kind of shouting and nobody can really hear him. Uh, and so it doesn't really work. Another enemy. That same one is going to attack Dragog. And I got it wrong last time. Dragog actually has an advantage of five on this roll. All right, yeah, so that'll hit. Dragog does some more damage. Two damage. Smacks it again, and it seems exhausted. Almost down for the count, but still kind of hanging on there. Just, just a thread. Another one. It's going to go for Cam. Cam, without any particular skills or weapons currently, only has a plus two. All right. That'll be a miss. That's eight damage. That's going to take out the rest of Cam's stamina. Oh no. The barbed tongue shoots out and knocks Cam over and Cam having casted so many spells is exhausted um, and is now down for the count with a undead frog above them prepared to eat their brains. They need someone to come stabilize them. Suvara having freed John Shi is going to charge down the slope and use her lance to joust with one of the frogs, the one that's closest to Cam. This will be a plus five for her. Win. So she does damage. Ooh, she does eight damage and she takes out that frog. She's got her lance and she's charging down the slope and gets to the one that's trying to get at Cam's brain and pow, takes it off and sends it splattering onto the rocks. Gog is still engaged with one of these frogs. Needs to hit it. That'll be a hit in any amount of damage. We'll take it out. Okay, great. Smashes that one with his astrolabe and that's now three down, six left. One still in the clump near the bottom of the cliff and the rest further down the beach. Enemy. So Suvara and Dragog are the closest ones. So who does it go after? It goes after Suvara. Bad choice. That'll win. She'll get a hit. Six. That's eight. All right. So that one is almost down. It uh, lunges at her and she's able to draw her sword and shoom, slash at it. Zamzies, seeing that Cam is down for the count, their star sibling, uh, they they rush down to Cam. They don't have any medical skills or anything, but they can at least try to get to them and maybe get them back, get the body back to the ship. An enemy. So that one that's closest to Zamzies is going to take a swipe. Probably a mistake because Zamzies is getting a plus. Four. Then she says, you stay away from my star sibling and just like <laughs> straight up punches the frog, <laughs> which will take that one out. Okay. The three that were closest are now all taken care of and there's one further down. So there's still only five left and they're kind of coming in. Um, Suvara is going to charge using jousting at one of the other frogs. So run down the beach and hit one of the other ones. That'll hit six damage. She runs down the beach, ah! shoving her lance at another undead frog. 
An enemy. That one that she's just attack attacks back. But she gets the hit element. Eight damage. Takes it out. It didn't like too kindly to being jousted at, so lunges at her, but she knocks it away with her lance. Another enemy. Uh, Zuvar is the one that's closest to all of them, so it's going to go for her. That'll hit. Great, she does four damage to one of them. They're all. She's a little bit surrounded now, right? There's four of them uh, kind of jumping at her, and she's batting them off with her swords and weapons. All right. Cam is incapacitated. End of round. We're going to have Cam test luck. And if they succeed, they will survive with some sort of consequence. And if they don't... Ooh, I don't know if I can say goodbye to Cam yet. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, well, roll under the eight. Good luck, buddy. Mm. So Zamsis has got Cam in their arms. And Cam says, Take the orb, Zamsis. Keep, keep exploring for me. And Zamsis says, No. No, we're star siblings. We're, we're supposed to stay together. Please, I, I can't. I can't say goodbye to you now. Cam says, "It's okay. I'll be okay. Just keep exploring. Keep the orb safe. I'll see you again." Mm. I'm having a hard time with that. <laughs> I was not prepared for that today. We gotta get out of here. Suvara, still fighting off undead frogs. Yep. And takes out another one, another enemy, damaging another one, another end of round. I mean, I think at this point, they just need to escape. They just need to get back into the ship. So I'm going to roll for Suvara to see if she's able to escape from the frogs. Yep. She, you know, rides back down to the beach. Um, Dragog climbs back up the cliff. Zamzi is carrying Cam's body. Gets back into the ship. Kristen does have herbalism. It's, it's a little bit late. And they have this honey from the realm of honey. You know, I don't know if it has any magical properties but we can try so they lay cam down on the bed Kristen doesn't know if this honey does anything if it has any healing or magical properties very unlikely that it will heal but we'll test it 27 i don't think it heals cam because that's a no you know it fills the cabin with the scent of sweet and the scent of honey and they feel Cam leave them and they have to say goodbye. So, um, sorry about that one, everyone. You just, you, I didn't know we were getting into combat today. Cam used a lot of spells and um, that's just how it is, but we did feed them some honey from the realm of honey um and so maybe there'll be something there at some point if you're enjoying these please like subscribe and share this is science fantasy awesome and you are awesome